Those of you with, with signs, stand behind. A few more sign holders if you want to come up here and stand behind. And let's get these chairs filled up. That sends a sign of for a full house. Got a couple chairs in the back row if someone wants to grab those. Okay. Ever since my young teenage son is. Oh, okay. Literally, because I'm getting short. family, colleagues, elected officials, advocates. What a great day, wonderful weather, right? For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Dr. Daniel Sandoval, board president of the Santa Paula Unified School District and a good friend of Dr. Gabino Aguirre. It is my honor to emcee this event today. Dr. Gabino is a Santa Paula institution for decades and his legacy is long. He has been an advocate on many issues, including bringing more county services to the Santa Clara Valley and standing against the reopening of the Santa Clara wastewater treatment plant. As a mayor and council member of Santa Paula, he made sure our hospital stayed open and worked on water quality issues um, to keep the community healthy and safe. But he's not just focused on the Santa Clara Valley. He has done marvelous work around the entire Ventura County area. He, as we both worked, right? I had the pleasure of working with him on the Ventura County Census Complete Count, which he led, right? That reached those were his, who were historically hard to reach so that Ventura County became not a place that was undercounted, but did one of the best jobs in the entire country. I've also had the privilege to working with him on early childhood education via the Project Isabella. Yes, we are starting in Santa Paula, but that's not the end goal. The end goal is universal, high quality preschool for everyone in the entire county, and Gabino is spearheading that effort as well. Today you will hear from two other speakers who will also tell, talk about his impact that he has had throughout his life. And so without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. That would be Ventura County Board of Education uh, trustee for District 3. Mark Lizagor. Well, I'm so honored to be able to be here before you today. Um, I have, it's been a pleasure to have known Dr. Gabino Aguirre for so many years and I know he is the perfect person to take on this challenge and be the leader that we so desperately need. Yeah. For, for, the, for District 3, but also for the entire county. Uh, Daniel uh, has reminded us of just a few of Gabino's accomplishments, and Christina will add to that. 
Um, but I do want to mention his, again, his work on the California Redistricting Commission. He was one of only 11 people in the entire state who was tasked with completely reinventing the way we set our districts for all the state and federal races. And that's now, that's now become the gold standard for the rest of our country. I also want to again tell you about the Isabella project, which is very dear to so many of our hearts because it's again um, ahead of the curve and, and it's, it's uh, addressing the challenge around early childhood education and childcare needs of everyone in our community. And uh, Gabino leads that and, and has been part of that with, uh, with his heart and with such passion. Um, I bring those two items up because they speak to this man's ability to think out of the box and to bring new and creative ideas to the table. And then at the same time, he knows how to collaborate and work with a, a wide array of opinions and people from other points of view so that together they come, come out with the, the right answer and the right solution to the problem. I, I think he exemplifies that. It's not a surprise to me because uh, as a, a fellow Bruin, uh, Gabino has his PhD from UCLA. Go Bruins. <laughs> Gabino is a man who when he identifies a problem or a need in the community, it becomes his problem. And his whole approach is to ask the question, if not me, then who? And then he jumps in. So, this is a guy who does not need to polish his resume with this campaign. <laughs> I think that's what really makes him stand out because he does this because he cares so deeply about our community and the welfare of every single person in it. And he sees this as his duty. Because we all know that he comes to this point in his life with such a breadth of experience as an educator, uh, community activist, a volunteer, and of course, a humble servant of the public as an elected official. This, is, this guy is a leader, tried and true. I believe Ventura County is at a critical moment in its history with an election that will determine whether we have leadership that works for all the people and not the special interests. Dr. Dr. Gabino Aguirre is stepping up for each and every one of us and I know that together we will win this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Fillmore City Council person, Christina Villasenor. Right, thank you, Daniel. And thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm honored to be here. I am excited to be here and throw my full support behind Gabino Aguirre for Supervisor District 3. I've known Gabino and his wonderful wife Coco for over a couple of decades. My, um, my nieces and my nephew had Coco as their teacher and back in one of my first election cycles I voted for Gabino in 2002 when he first ran for Santa Paula City Council and that he won the first of his two terms. And since then, and for years, decades before, he's been a true leader for the people, for his constituents, because Gavino puts people first. Whether he's an advocate for the dignity of farm workers and farm worker families, as an educator, as an education administrator, elected official, part of the first cohort of the California Redistricting Commission, as a community advocate for Latino Town Hall, 
to put forward the rights and the needs of our Latino Chicano community as a defender of the environment and protector of our community's health and safety. Gavino has always put people first. If you don't know him, and I think everyone here does, but I'm speaking to the press, I'm speaking to those in the third district, and especially the new constituents of the third district and those in Camarillo and other cities beyond Santa Paula, you will get to know Gavino. And I want you to talk to him, to talk to him about an issue that concerns you, whether it's in your neighborhood, community or government services, healthcare, the environment, jobs, and you will see immediately his willingness and his ability to tackle issues, examine it from all sides, to think critically, both short-term and long-term, about the impacts, and he will work through it. He will work on this through a lens of equity and fairness and thinking not of only the interests of a handful of people or those with deep pockets, but the interests of all. In his role as co-chair of the 2020 Census for Ventura County for the campaign, he worked to get everyone counted so that we had our fair share of federal and state dollars flow our way. And it was about everyone being counted. Que yo cuento, que tú cuentas, que todos nosotros contamos. Gavino puts people first. Now Gavino, he comes from humble beginnings like many, many here in our third district. And he's racked up many accomplishments and accolades and commendations. And I really, really admire that he has always stayed humble. He has always stayed true to himself, to his convictions, to the community. And he will always take the call. Gavino will always take the call. He will always stop and talk. And he will be the leader for the people. He's the candidate that the third district needs. He's a candidate for us. <laughs> Wanted to add on at the end as I was thinking this morning about John Lewis, the late great John Lewis. And John Lewis was known as the conscious of the Congress. And I think Gavino and all of your boards, commissions, governing bodies that you've sat on, you have been that person. You have been the consciousness of that group and you will do that for the supervisors. So we appreciate you. We love you. We are behind you 125 more percent for Gavino for Supervisor District 8. It's only the beginning. Thank you, Gavino. Thank you, Christina. All right, <clears throat> the reason we're here, the man of the hour. Let's give it up for our next District 3 Supervisor, Dr. Gavino Aguirre. Que viva el pueblo. Que viva. Se puede. Se sí, se puede. Orale pues. Ay, Diosito, what am I doing here? So, uh, good day, good afternoon, Ventura County. I'm Dr. Gabino Aguirre. As was mentioned, former farm worker, veteran, educator, member of the city council, former member of the Citizens Redistricting Commission. Sometimes when, uh, when people talk about me, it's easier for them to say what I've done for me it kind of gets a little bit difficult because I've led a long, long life full of very interesting things. So during my long experience, I've devoted myself to helping others. My life and career have focused on supporting you, los vecinos, mis vecinos, my neighbors, knowing the struggles and the obstacles that can stand in the way of working families in the way of stability, in the way of well-being, in the way of fulfilling their life. I've worked to empower and serve others. I am a man of the people. Yes. Yeah. 
Some of the things that have been uh, already mentioned, I'd like to reiterate. I have championed health services, being one of the founders of the Clinicas del Camino Real that now serve over 60,000 people annually. Joined forces with some of my compadres and comadres in Santa Paula to make sure that the Santa Paula Hospital uh, remained open. And I've also supported community organizations that serve thousands, thousands every day. I've worked for fair elections as well, serving on, this, on state and local redistricting commissions, and led the Census 2020 campaign for every county between Los Angeles and the Bay Area, the coastal counties. And as was mentioned before, we went from the very bottom out of 3,500 counties in the United States, we went from an assessment that we, our county was one of the most difficult counties to count in the census to the top 5% in the United States. As, as an educator, I embraced innovations. There's regular school and there's alternative school. Regular school is for folks who kind of toe the line, behave, love school, whatever, whatever, right? The alternative school are for those youngsters and families that are not getting a fair shake within that system. So we set up an alternative school. We designed that school with the help of students and parents. We designed that school. I ran that school for 20 years, became one of the first accredited high schools, alternative high schools in California, and became a California model school as well, one of the first in California. <laughs> So when, when, I first met, when I first became a laborer in the fair city of El Paso, Texas, you know, I remember working with my mom and dad and my other brothers and sisters, and we were picking cotton in West Texas. We were always in fear, the community that I was with, we were always in fear of the immigration service. At that time, they had green trucks. So whenever, whenever any of those laborers, any of those farm workers, when they saw that green truck coming, what do you think they did? Take off, right? So what did children do? For myself, I would be riding in the back of that long bag of cotton having a great time, because I was only four years old. And when they said, everybody hide, guess where I went? Inside the bag, <laughs> inside that bag. So, uh, so because of those experiences, I've advocated for working families. We know that the dignity of an individual, the dignity of a family rests on whether you have a good job that helps you pay for everyday expenses, that helps you pay for a little bit of extra so you can enjoy life that helps you with funding the uh, taking your kids to college and not only college but also into the building trades as well because not everybody likes books not everybody likes to go to that grind and so personally I love both I love to work with my hands and I'm a in intellectual in a sense because I love learning in fact my middle name, which I accepted when I was decided to become a citizen of this country, having been born in Mexico, my middle name is Clamatini. And Clamatini is a word, an Aztec word from Mesoamerica that means he who facilitates the education of others. So when I was a principal, so, so when I was a principal, and, uh, and kids would be sent to my school, come to enroll in my school, I would say to them, look, first of all, I work for you. I work for you. I insisted on the parents coming with them, and I would say to the parents, I work for you too. And there are three things that we need to do to uh, provide for the success of this youngster. One is that you have to acknowledge that they are a human being and they have value in life. The second thing is that they need to feel 
respect. And if you're not, if you're not, if you're being disrespectful, and sometimes as parents, because we feel like we know it all, we are disrespectful toward our children. It shouldn't be, but that's how it is. So I would say to these parents, they need respect. And the third thing to succeed is that they need the tools for success. So at this model school that we set up, that's what we did every day. We didn't have a marching band, we had a rock and roll band. We didn't have a football team, we had a touch football team. We didn't have an art department, we had art classes and our art department, hands down, won every single art contest that we entered our kids into. So I'm very proud of having been an educator. And as a Tamatini, I still continue to work with youngsters. So also, I've protected the residents during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I led, the, I led that campaign here in the county. I protected the environment. When they were trying to get a, a peaker plant in, uh, into the Santa Clara Valley, we said, no, hell no. Yeah. And, 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 And I got up there and I just said, you know what, what you're doing here with this community is just so totally disrespectful that we're gonna walk out right now. I turned around and looked at all these folks that were there and said, let's go. We all walked out. It was a great day. Yes. So with all of the things that I mentioned and, and all the kind words that shared by the other speakers, you could say, and the press can pick that up, I'm the real deal. I'm the real deal. I'm the real deal. As your county supervisor, I will put you first. And why do I want to do that? Because you are my other self. That's the way it goes. Let me thank my brother here behind me, Javier Gomez, for teaching me that concept, an old Mayan concept that says that it's called in la quiche. And essentially it says that you are my other self. That if I honor and help you, I am honoring and helping myself. Oh, yes. And if I'm not doing that for you, I'm not doing that for myself either. So as your county supervisor, then I will put you first. Not self-interest, not corporate interest. My goal, I have three. My goal as a supervisor are to work for working families, providing good jobs within a healthy economy. We need to transition out of this fossil fuels nightmare that we're in. And, and because, because I come from a labor background, I know that I need this week's check, next month's check, I know that. So it's not about you know t telling oil and gas, you're out of here today, you're out of here tomorrow. No, that's not how it works. How it works is to phase, in, phase out fossil fuels and as we phase in green technologies. And that includes training, that includes funding, that includes all of those things because we don't, we want working families, middle class families to be respected. We want them to survive. Not only do we want them to survive, but we want them to thrive. So for me, as a county supervisor, it comes down to one simple question. What kind of a county do we want? That's it. What kind of a county do we want? Do we want one where families thrive? Of course. So I invite you to join the Democratic Party, all community leaders, all of our supporters, and those that are still yet to support us. I invite you to help us out because I can't do it by myself. My team can't do it by myself. It does, it's, not, it's only a campaign. But in order for us to win, we need to go from a campaign to a real movement where we can engage all of those goals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Are you with me, Ventura County? Are you with me, Ventura County? Are you with me, Ventura County? Thank you. Let's give it up for Dr. Gabino Aguirre, District 3 Supervisor. All right, before we can truly say that he'll be our supervisor, <laughs> we know that there is a challenge ahead. With the repeal of the campaign finance law in the county, yes. special, interest, yeah. <laughs> special interest money will be here like we've never seen before. So we do need your help if we're going to be successful. You can start off simply by going to his new website, gabinoforsupervisor.com, where you can endorse him, volunteer, sign up for more info, and most importantly, unfortunately, donate. <laughs> that button's active and will need your support. We will be asking you to help create this grassroots movement by knocking on doors, manning phone banks, getting the word out, right, telling your neighbors, you know, and really showing right, that we want this government to be for the people of Ventura County. Yes. So I would like to uh, respect your time. Right. One more time for our candidate, Dr. Gabino Aguirre. <laughs> we thank you so much for coming and have a great rest of the day.